Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, what I wish I could say was a bright and sunny Alton Park. Sadly, a very Easter Monday weather we have for us today to kick off our second day of action at the season opening race weekend for the Ginetta Racing Championships. And we're kicking off our day with round number two of the Michelin Ginetta Junior Championship, who entertained us thoroughly uh, on Saturday afternoon with a Pretty typical Ginetta Junior race, really. Lots of close quarters racing, lots of side by side, and a pretty close finish as well. But now completely different conditions greet the youngsters. It is a wet track. It's a much colder ambient temperature, somewhere around seven degrees or so. Uh, and because the conditions have changed since they were last on track a couple of days ago, the drivers will be given two green flag laps, this being the first of those uh, green flag laps. At the end of the second of those laps, we will then stop them on the grid and we will be racing. So uh, very important that the drivers have that extra opportunity just to scope out the conditions. We haven't had any on-track running uh, since Saturday afternoon uh, because this being the Easter Bank holiday weekend, we qualify and race on the Saturday and we have a full day of racing on the Monday, which will include uh, across that racing six Ginetta races, three apiece for each of our Ginetta championships, the juniors, the Ginetta GTs and the Ginetta GT Academy. Uh, well, if you didn't tune in for the race on Saturday afternoon for the juniors, then you did miss a very, very close race and a very, very strong defensive drive from that young man there, car number 25, Ethan Jeff Hall, who led the entire race from pole position to the race victory, but never by more than half a Ginetta's length or so. He was under constant threat uh, from eventual runner-up in that race, Charlie Hart. Charlie tried everything, really, to try and find a way through, but was always sort of boxed in amongst that leading group always had pressure uh, from cars behind him and that sort of prevented Charlie from being quite as um, attacking as he would have maybe liked to be. So we'll wait and see whether maybe the wet conditions will produce a slightly different kind of race. Charlie will not be starting second on the grid for this one though because the grid for race two is based upon the second fastest lap times from qualifying yesterday. So actually Charlie has to come uh, from the inside of row number two. It will be Chase Fernandez instead who starts from the front row, the E3 Sport driver, another second year driver uh, in that sort of turquoise and black number 90 car. And uh, Chase and Charlie will both be looking to show the newbies how it's done because it was a rookie driver in Ethan Jeff Hall who was victorious yesterday and uh, I'm sure that some of those drivers who are returning for a second season probably expected that at least through the first couple of events they might have a bit of an advantage over the lesser experienced drivers but uh, so far that's not necessarily proving to be the case. It's a good grid of cars, though. 23 of them uh, lining up for our first event of the season. Perhaps one or two more uh, on the way a little bit later on in the year. Good to see that the Ginetta Junior Championship uh, is still going as strong as ever. Now entering into its second season alongside the British GT Championship as part of the uh, SRO package. Uh, and uh, as I said, a very, very well supported and very competitive grid, which lines up in the following manner. Ethan Jeff Hall uh, on pole position. Yesterday's race winner looking for two from two. He's got Chase Fernandez alongside. Row two, Charlie Hart runner up yesterday and Henry Jocelyn who had an entertaining race yesterday more on that later Ruben Dan likewise was in the wars a little bit in race one he'll start race two from fifth alongside Archie Clark the two elite motorsport drivers sharing row three row four then for Torrin Byrne with uh, Isaac Phelps alongside him in eighth and then the top ten completed by Tom Ingram Hill and Nicholas Ellis are racing alongside the elite motorsport James Shotton had dramas before the race even begun yesterday. He'll be hoping for a clearer run at it today. He'll start 11 alongside Marcus Sater, who's further back on the grid than he was yesterday. So the number 67 one to watch for moving forwards. Alfie Davis and Harry Moss, meanwhile, chair row seven. Felix Livesey and Jude Peters are together on the eighth row of the grid. Row nine uh, is where you will find Max Cuthbert and Jack Robinson, Fox Motorsport driver. And then the tenth row of the grid, the top 20 completed by Irishman Colin Cronin and James Ellis. Row 11 for Giovanni Cassell, Joseph, Ethan Carney alongside Ethan and Holly Mile, who starts at the back of the grid. Well, they are not shown as having registered a lap time in qualifying. Now, I suspect they did register lap times in qualifying, but not enough of them were legal uh, in order for them to have uh, set a proper lap time. Track limits, I suspect, uh, were at play there. And so they'll have to start from the very back of the grid. Now, our onboard camera cars on Saturday were chosen very well, and I suspect we've done the same again today. Ruben Dan 
like I said, had a couple of dramas. He was in the gravel at one point at Cascade. Then he tangled with somebody uh, up at Lodge Corner. I'm hoping for his sake he has a cleaner race today. But just in case, we've got the onboard camera uh, so that we can get a bird's eye view of all the action aboard car number 11. The familiar Elite Motorsport colours with a little bit of uh, green touch for this season. Uh, we've also got an onboard camera with Henry Jocelyn. Henry was up in the leading group until he tried to go to the inside of Chase Fernandez at Old Hall Corner midway through the race and lost control, spun in front of the pack and miraculously was avoided by all. Uh, but unfortunately, it dropped him right to the tail of the field. And uh, he will have a little bit of work to do again in this one, actually. Uh, well, starting fourth, so he's got half a chance of a good result, but knows he can't afford another mistake like the one from yesterday. There's Jude Peters, the number 70 car, also carrying one of our onboard cameras. Now, Jude will be in the thick of the action starting from 16th, another first-year driver. And uh, we'll watch with interest to see what progress that car can make on a very, very wet circuit. It is not raining heavily anymore. In fact, it might have stopped completely, but there's just sort of this mist in the air, that really fine rain uh, that uh, is certainly making the track conditions treacherous at the start of the day of racing. Yesterday, we saw lots of drivers finding that the only way to overtake, really, was around the outside of people. So defensive were the front runners being. Well, actually, in the wet, that could be the best place to go in general because the grip tends to be around the outside line, off the traditional racing line. Who is going to figure that out the quickest, I wonder? Well, we're almost about to find out. We've got 20 minutes on the clock. We've got 23 Ginetta Junior drivers lined up on the Alton Park grid. And very shortly, we will have those red lights illuminated on the starting gantry. That happens now. They go out. We're away in racing. Good start from a few of them in the mid-pack, a brilliant start from pole position by Ethan Jeff Hall, so he will clearly, I suspect, hold the advantage on the run towards Old Hall Corner. Chase Fernandez busy defending second place, not from Charlie Hart, but instead from Ruben Dan, who's come through from fifth on the grid in the yellow machine, into third position. Jocelyn slots into fourth, and Charlie Hart down to fifth, so he and Ruben Dan swapping positions there on the run through the first corner, but Ethan Jeff Hall is showing no lack of confidence in the slippery conditions, and leads them down through Cascades for the first time. You can see there they're all hunting for the grip on the outside line. One or two of them are going a bit too wide, perhaps, through Cascades, but all just about keeping it between the white lines. We ride on board uh, with Henry Jocelyn. Decent start from Henry. Now, what further progress can he make? He is third as they arrive down at Island Bend because he's found a way past Ruben Dan uh, on the run through Cascades and looks as though he is pretty pacey at the moment. He and Chase Fernandez locking horns in the battle for second. Charlie Hart there taking the very high line through the shell hairpin. And again, that is where the grip should be in wet conditions. And many of these drivers being fresh out of karting will be fully aware of that. That is definitely something we see uh, at the very top level of karting around the world, really, and uh, I'm sure that those with karting experience are starting to uh, find that wet line maybe a little bit more quickly than those without. Over the top of Hilltop we go then. Ethan Jeff Hall leading. Fernandez second. Jocelyn third. Charlie Hart did move back into fourth position ahead of Dan, who is now under real, real attack uh, from the number 35 machine there down to uh, his lop chicane. That was Isaac Phelps, who's also moved up a couple of positions from eighth where he started onto the back of the leading group ride on board further back with Jude Peters and Jude has got a bit of a face full of well I can't actually even see who that is just ahead of us I think that might be the number 28 machine of uh, Harry Moss who are trying to find a way past and there is nowhere to go the good thing I'm seeing here though is that the visibility isn't too poor it's not ideal of course but uh, the spray isn't too bad hopefully that means that uh, the there isn't too much standing water conditions should start to improve as the race goes on someone wide in the background there that was number 67 Marcus Sater I think who already looks like he's making progress as is Henry Jocelyn who goes round the outside of not only Chase Fernandez but also Ethan Jeff Hall goes from third to first in one corner that was the perfect example of the grip being on the outside line the top two defended the inside as you normally would in dry conditions and Henry Jocelyn Jocelyn drove round the outside of them. He's now under threat from Ethan Jeff Hall uh, through Old Hall Corner. But again, the grip is not on the inside line. Uh, so Henry, with that wide sweeping line, is able to hang on. But that was a superb move and the kind of move you'd expect, really, from someone who has a year of experience in this championship under his belt. He's already had a few wet races as Henry Jocelyn, and he's already showing that experience now. Good battling going on further back. Meanwhile, we're on board with Ruben Dan. Uh, down to sixth position now, then. So went from fifth to third at the start and completes the first lap outside of the top five. So he's had a bit of a yo-yo race already. 
But this will be interesting now. Can Henry Jocelyn break away from Ethan Jeff Hall, who is in his first ever wet car race at the moment? So learning on the fly and actually following Henry Jocelyn, learning his lines might not be a bad way to uh, go in this race. That is a little bit of a close moment further back. Felix Livesey trying to nuzzle up alongside Tom Ingram Hill and uh, maybe a little bit of paint training going out of the shell hair bit, but nothing too major. Tom. Uh, manages to hang on. Tom, who we believe shares no relation to either Tom Ingram or Jake Hill, but uh, with a name like that, destined, I think, to have a successful career in motorsport. This, meanwhile, was the Henry Jocelyn's eye view of that superb pass for the race lead. When I say the grip is on the outside, as you can see, there isn't a lot of it. He's still fighting with the wheel, but he was fully committed and had much more momentum off the corner and cleared both cars ahead of him. That was brilliant stuff. Oh, contact down at Nickerbrook. Around goes Nicholas Ellis, right in front of a group of cars who clatter into each other. Around goes Felix Livesey. And thankfully, they all saw him just at the last moment, but that was a bit of a clumsy moment coming out of uh, Nickerbrook corner. I think it was Archie Clark, the blue number 43 car with whom um, Nicholas Ellis tangled. And then after that, it was a little bit of a domino effect. Someone's off at Druids now. That is the number 67 machine of Marcus Sater. So Sater, after a disappointing qualifying effort, starting only 12, had picked his way into the top 10, uh, but drops back out of it now, well and truly. He's probably further back now than he started the race after a grassy moment at uh, Druids Corner. So through we come then. That's only two laps completed and already plenty of action and perhaps some more at Old Hall Corner. Up the inside goes Ethan Jeff Hall. That's the second lap in a row that he's tried that move. And it's the second second lap in a row that he has been unsuccessful. Henry Jocelyn able to find the grip on the outside line. And look at the extra momentum that gives him down the avenue. He's pulled a length or two by the time they arrive at Denton's. That is Felix Livesey's car, pretty badly damaged after that side-to-side -side contact that he had, really in avoidance of the initial impact. And uh, that is a broken left rear suspension and he will pull off to the side of the road more drama now at old hall corner and that looked to me like ethan carney getting it all out of shape in the blue car drags himself back onto the road thankfully having not lost control completely but lost a lot of speed and momentum down the straight so all of a sudden, after a pretty quiet and safe and easy first lap, it's all kicking off. This is the latest drama up the inside line. Went the number 53 car of Carney. He was trying to find a way past Giovanni. Cassell Joseph and was only just avoided by the cars behind as he endured a pretty lively tank slapper. But uh, it only takes a little bit of contact in these conditions and you will find yourself going sideways pretty quickly. Some admirable car control on display actually from the youngsters already. Right, back on board now with Jude Peters, who, through all of this mess, has picked up a few positions. Jude was 12th at the start of the lap, just behind Burn. Off again has gone Marcus Sater. Oh, he's got a left front puncture, that's why. Now, whether that was cause or effect, I don't know. He had just been off at Druids. And uh, it could be that the puncture led to the off at Druids or was sustained at Druids and has now put him off the road uh, going through the shell hairpin. Not so sure. Into Druids we go then. Lots of grass on the road down at this part of the circuit. And on the exit of this part of the circuit, there may be a yellow flag because this is where we believe Felix Livesey's car, yes, uh, has been stranded. It's well off the road. I would like to think we can continue without a safety car. But we'll wait and see what race control decide to do. In these conditions particularly, cars uh, and young drivers such as these can be fairly unpredictable. If someone were to dip a wheel on the kerb or the grass going out of Druids, they could feasibly spin towards that location. So it may be decided that we need to clear the car away. We'll wait and see. For now, though, we continue racing. And Jude Peters continues to try and pick away through the order. Second gear scrabbling for traction out of Lodge Corner. Number seven car there of Nicholas Ellis, of course, has lost a lot of ground as well. The orange machine, that's one to keep an eye on now as the race goes on. Ahead of the field, though, Henry Jocelyn now three quarters of a second clear of Ethan Jeff Hall, but into third place now is Isaac Phelps. Isaac Phelps started eighth on the grid and having set an outright fastest first sector on the previous lap, is now into a podium position and chasing down the leading two. So um, this is, there he goes, look, the white and black number 35 car having found a way past Chase Fernandez. Can he chase after the race leaders? There is Ethan Jeff Hall in second. Is he in second, though? Because this is Henry Jocelyn coming through Old Hall Corner. I did not see Henry there. He's out of Old Hall Corner. Oh, 
the gears and down towards Cascades Corner. Has our race leader had a moment? He's had a very slow first sector. And yes, this is why he skates straight on at Cascades through the gravel trap. And Henry Jocelyn, who was doing everything right up until this point, has potentially thrown it all away as we approach half race distance. So this is now the battle for the race lead. It is once more yesterday's winner, Ethan Jeff Hall out in front. It is now Isaac Phelps remarkably in second, Fernandez third, Hart fourth, Dan fifth, and there, car number 26, that is Henry Jocelyn, who a minute ago was in the lead and scurrying away and suddenly finds himself with it all to do again. Now we know he's got good speed, he's shown that already. Can he use that to close back in on the leading group, who themselves are likely to start doing battles in uh, any moment now? If that is the case, that will only assist him in uh, bridging that gap. In fact, here is the battle uh, going on at the front of the field. They've all closed together. Ethan Jeff Hall yesterday, in fairness, didn't look necessarily like the fastest driver on the track, but he showed some really, really good defensive skill. Of course, in the wet, he will need to do things slightly differently than he did yesterday. But let's see how quickly he's learning. He dives for the apex at Lodge. And look, doesn't have the grip mid-corner. The others will get the run now through Deer's Leap. And up and across the timing line. Is there going to be a move on here? Defensive line again taken by Jeff Hall. That's not the way I'd have gone, Ethan, because now the grippier side of the road belongs to the charging Isaac Phelps. He's on the outside line. He bangs wing mirrors with the race leader. And he sweeps into the lead. There's contact. And Jeff Hall goes around. You can see see that coming he's heading for the barriers just about I think we'll pull the car up pointing the wrong way but at least having not made contact with the tire wall but he just did not have the grip to carry that amount of speed on the inside line and in the end actually Isaac Phelps pretty fortunate to get away with that as well Ethan rejoins the circuit but that is a shame he's not really put a foot wrong all weekend so far but a uh, little bit of inexperience maybe racing in the wet conditions and uh that has shown up a little bit in this second race of the weekend. He'll learn, though. They will all learn. They're all youngsters. They're all learning their craft right in front of our eyes. And uh, that's what makes this such an exciting championship to watch, of course. Jeff Hall, I'm sure, uh, will have a textbook full of knowledge that he's picked up uh, over the course of this 20-minute race. He's rejoined. I'm trying to figure out where he is in the order. That's car number 17. So I think he's ninth at the moment because that's James Shotton, uh, the number 17 car just behind him, followed closely by number 18, uh, which is Torin Byrne. So I reckon ninth position for our erstwhile race leader. It, it has been one of those races no one seems to want to lead. Let's see whether Isaac Phelps can make a better go of it. Uh, the car cutting the chicane there is the recovering Marcus Sater. He's had that left front tire replaced, but uh, is now obviously a lap down, so deliberately shortcuts the chicane to get out of the way of the leaders, and Jocelyn is around again now. Henry Jocelyn pushing hard to try and catch up to the leaders, has looped it at his lops, and that's the second time he's been very lucky to get away with a, a little moment. And that really now has, I think, taken him out of contention for a podium finish. But he was so far ahead of the uh, next group of cars that actually he's uh, going to keep hold of what is now fifth position, I believe. Chase Fernandez then set the fastest lap, by the way, a lap ago, as you can see there, 215.7. Now, that was about nine tenths quicker than Isaac Phelps, who he is now right on terms with. Of course, Isaac was busy battling Ethan Jeff Hall at the time, but now Isaac is the one uh, defending at Lodge. Chase Fernandez has got the better run out of the corner. And as we come towards two thirds race distance, it is still anybody's guess who's going to pick up the race victory. Phelps defends the inside, then sweeps back over towards the middle of the road, doesn't want to go in on that tight line at Old Hall Corner, but he did go in slightly tighter than Fernandez, who therefore has an extra mile an hour or so's momentum on the exit of the corner. Can he do anything with it? Through the right-hand kink at Denton's, down towards Cascades, where again Phelps defends the inside line, and at the very last second, Fernandez jinks towards the apex, gets an overlap, but does he have the traction on corner exit? The answer ultimately is no, and Isaac Phelps manages to hang on. Brilliant racing this, though, between the two of them. Charlie Hart in third is rubbing his hands with glee at this because he's starting now to claw his way uh, back on terms with the top two who slither their way through the left-hander at the island bend. Hit the brakes. Very bumpy, undulating braking zone into this steeply cambered right-hander at the uh, shell hairpin. A few um, variations in line being shown through there. Charlie Hart going a lot wider than the two ahead, whether intentionally or not, I'm not sure, but uh, seemed to drop maybe a length or so through that part of the track. 
Still not exactly staying away from the curbs at Britain's, are they? Now, this looks rather entertaining. This is the number 70, one of our onboard cars, remember? Jude Peters trying to find a way past James Shotton in amongst all of this is Nicholas Ellis, the uh, orange and black number seven car, who's having really not a great race, is he? Having started uh, inside the top 10, struggling now to stay on terms with the back of the top 10. And he has got a fair bit of pressure from behind from um, the number 74 machine of Alfie Davis. So, oh, and the car behind Alfie, I think, just lost it, didn't they? They were certainly very sideways. Yes, we're missing a car now at the back of that group. That would have been the number 45, I reckon, uh, that has just gone around of Jack Robinson. Yes, there he is. Look, just now coming over the top of Hilltop, having uh, lost it coming out of Britain's. So, again, conditions continuing to catch drivers out, and we are still six and a half minutes away from the conclusion of the race. Out wide goes Ellis, and that will lose him speed up the hill. Alfie Davis, only too grateful for that, pulls alongside and should have the number seven car cleared by the time we get to Druids, although they are leaning on each other slightly as they head through the left-hand kink. And uh, in the end, Davis does make that move stick. So they head through Druids' corner have just completed another lap and fastest of the lead group now incidentally is Charlie Hart so they're all grouping back together again here is a move being made by Ethan Jeff Hall on one of his teammates now that's the number 28 machine uh, at Lodge Corner of Harry Moss who runs wide over the exit curb and Ethan Jeff Hall I think is about to relieve him of eighth position across the line they head and Ethan finds himself once again on that perilous inside line at the first corner how is this one going to play out has he learned his lesson Yes, looks like he has. Slides through and then makes life very difficult for his teammates on the exit of the corner. Our racing team would have been watching that through their hands in the uh, pit lane. Thankfully, contact is averted. Now, what is uh, Jude Peters up to? Jude is now 11 on the tail still of James Shotton. And just not able to find a way through. This is the second of the E3 Sport machines. So teammates Chase Fernandez, who is currently up there challenging for the race lead. Uh, well, this is definitely a better performance today, I would say, for Jude. Jude ended up yesterday. Uh, only 17th was Jude Peters. Now, knocking on the door of the top 10, if only they could find a way past the number 17 of uh, James Shotham. Through Shell, the right-hander, noticeably less standing water now than there was at the start of the race, and the lap times are backing that up, aren't they? Lots of personal bests. In fact, one, two, three, four, five six of the top eight drivers set personal best lap times last time around. So I think we're also in a phase of the race where people are coming back together as well. There's been a few incidents that spread the field out at the front and they're all sort of grouping back together again now using clean air to set those good lap times. <laughs> this is not the R Racing team posing for a team photo, but we do just happen to have four of them uh, going through the Hislop chicane at once because Ethan Jeff Hall is now closing in on uh, Tom Ingram Hill, uh, his other teammate for seventh place. This, though, is the fight for the race lead. Uh, we're about to come through at the completion of lap number seven, and Chase Fernandez is suddenly looking very, very racy indeed. Force is the big defensive move out of the race leader. So defensive was Isaac. He was on the grass uh, coming into Lodge Corner, but that's not really the place to be. He tries to bully Chase Fernandez off the road. That, uh, well, actually worked in the end chase backed out of the maneuver uh, but I think Isaac realized there that he put himself on the slower inside line at Lodge Fernandez wanted to cruise around the outside uh, a la Henry Jocelyn from the opening lap of the race but that was not going to happen on Isaac Phelps watch and that one bit of defending has now brought Charlie Hart right back onto their tail a good run out of Old Hall uh, for Fernandez but nowhere to go with it he's got a face full of Isaac Phelps number 35 machine he doesn't want to go to the inside he doesn't really want to go around the outside of Cascades either even in the wet this seems to be more of a single file car a corner and Isaac Phelps uses that to his advantage comes in as the race leader comes out of the corner as the race leader Fernandez skates over the exit curve and then immediately tries to duck back into the slipstream this is going to get very very lively I think over the final lap and a half or so because Charlie Hart is almost a part of this tantalizingly close now to the rear of the second placed car which looks very, very uh, squirrely under braking into the shell hairpin, doesn't it? Chase Fernandez really wringing the neck of his Ginetta to try and get back in striking range of the race leader, who has gained seven positions in this race. It's been a fantastic drive by Isaac Phelps, who's fully airborne there. They're not even bothering to stay uh, within the white lines on the way into the Britain chicane. Um, that is obviously not a part of the circuit that's being monitored for track limits, and I'm kind of grateful for it, really. It's a very spectacular shot, that, as they bounce and uh, leap their way into sight. Back down the hill we go, then all of them staying off the racing line there into his lops. 
reason they want to stay off the racing line in the wet is that that's where all the rubber's been laid down into the tarmac and rubber, when wet, gets very slippery. So uh, that's why they try and avoid that rubbered up um, sort of part of the track, particularly in the braking zones. Fernandez has had a good run out of Nick Brook there, tries to get alongside Isaac Phelps, who yet again throws a bit of a block. I think that was just about in time. I don't think that was too late. But at some point, you feel that Chase will probably choose not to take his foot out of the door. And that's when real drama could arrive on the scene. Down towards Lodge we go. Yellow flags once again back in now uh, with Felix Livesey's car having been there for a number of laps. They're all sort of trying to cover each other off. Charlie Hart is the one able to go to the wide line because he's got no pressure from behind. And that means he gets by far the best run off the corner of all three of them and draws completely level with Chase Fernandez now for second position. Across the line we go to begin the final lap of what has been a fantastic second round of the championship. And Charlie Hart is about to go into second position. He clears Fernandez before they get to Old Hall Corner. Fantastic stuff. Now, can Charlie chase down Isaac Phelps and challenge for the race victory? Or is it going to be for the second race in a row, one of our rookie drivers who stands atop the podium? Down towards Cascades we head, Charlie Hart for now is more preoccupied defending from Fernandez, and that's allowing the leader to get away. Do these two choose to work together maybe for half a lap, try and close back in on Isaac? I somehow don't think that's going to happen. Charlie again, mirror driving a bit down the uh, lakeside straight. Just covers off Fernandez, tries to sail off into Island Bend with as much speed as he can muster and does draw maybe a car's length or so's advantage on Fernandez. Now, can Hart close in on the leader in the first sector? He was, of course, four tenths slower because he was busy defending from Phelps. But the middle sector for Charlie Hart looks pretty strong, doesn't he? Gapping Fernandez, I'd say he's closer to the leader now than Fernandez is to him. A good run out of Britain's is required, then a smooth run through the Hislops and uh, Nickerbrook section, uh, unlike the run that uh, Ruben Dance just had through Britain's. That is at least his first off-track excursion today. He'd had two by this point yesterday and he's running a very strong fourth. So good speed in the number 11 car. But just struggling a bit in the conditions in the latter stages. The middle sector time uh, will be in shortly. I believe the second sector ends up towards the top of Clay Hill. So we're approaching that part of the circuit now. I don't think we need the timing screen though to tell us that Charlie Hart is faster on this lap than Isaac Phelps. Can he get there though in time to challenge at Lodge Corner? Off at the exit of Ireland Bend has gone the 45 of Jack Robinson. It is an outright fast this middle sector, four tenths quicker than the race leader by Charlie Hart. Can the second year driver snatch a victory here right at the death? Round Druids they go then, down towards Lodge. This is where it will all be settled. The two elite motorsport teammates are going to do battle for race victory. Who is it going to be? Isaac Phelps moves to the inside line. Charlie Hart is not really close enough, is he? He breaks as late as he dares into Lodge. Can he get the power down and the traction through the elite that he did a lap ago? I just don't think he's close enough. Isaac Phelps will just about by the skin of his teeth hang on from eighth on the grid to a fantastic victory here at Alton Park. Round number two of the Michelin Ginetta Junior Championship is won by Isaac Phelps. Second place for the second race in a row to Charlie Hart and Chase Fernandez will complete the podium. The top three covered by half a second. There is still plenty of battling going on further back. James Shotton has been the nemesis of Jude Peters in this race. Jude cannot find a way through and now tries to go to the outside line. They bang doors. There was another car trying to join in on the inside. This is going to be a real scrum for the line. That was Alfie Davis taking advantage and moving past Jude Peters and James Shotton will hang on to 10th position with some pretty robust defending uh, into Lodge Corner uh, but hangs on to 10th nonetheless and Jude Peters will be particularly frustrated having spent half the race trying to find a way past James to then end up losing a place at the final corner but uh, no such issues for Isaac Phelps who withstood that late charge from Charlie Hart to claim the victory and lead home in Elite Motorsport 1-2 in what was a brilliant race. Very often dry Ginetta Junior races are infinitely more interesting than the wet ones because that's when you really get that sort of side-by-side -side slipstreaming action that these cars are known for. But uh, today they were on top form. We had a few slips and a few dramas, but some fantastic racecraft. And Isaac Phelps demonstrated that well to come through from the outside of the fourth row to claim a race victory. So deep breath everybody we get to do that all over again later on this afternoon along with still five other Ginetta races to be enjoyed two from the GT Academy and the Protile Motorsport Ginetta GT Championship our second junior race will be at around about 20 past two this afternoon all being well there is of course the small chance of some delays through the day so keep tuned all day long
uh, to enjoy a fantastic day of racing here at Alton Park. But it's Elite Motorsport who have started the day in the perfect fashion with a 1-2 finish. Isaac Phelps fending off his teammate Charlie Hart for the win, uh, with E3 Sports' Chase Fernandez completing the podium. Charlie Hart, by the way, the first of the non-rookie drivers home in second. Ruben Dan was fourth. Henry Jocelyn, fifth in the end after another lively race. Archie Clark was sixth ahead of Ethan Jeff Paul, the pole sitter. Tom Ingram Hill, eighth. Harry Moss, ninth. And James Shotton with Alfie Davis, Jude Peters, Torin Byrne, and the rest in behind. So, a fantastically exciting second round of Michelin Ginetta Junior Championship. Saw a brilliant start made by yesterday's winner, uh, Ethan Jeff Hall from pole position. He led them clearly through the first couple of corners as the others scrabbled for grip behind. But it was Henry Jocelyn who made arguably the move of the race at the completion of lap one, sailed round the outside of Chase Fernandez and the race leader, Jeff Hall, to claim the victory, only to throw it all away down at Cascades a lap or so later, carried too much speed and went careering through the gravel trap. He joined outside of the top 10, eventually recovered to fifth place. Then Ethan Jeff Hall was left battling Isaac Phelps for the lead until this collision at Old Hall Corner sent yesterday's race winner into a spin, lucky to avoid the barriers, and again, he would recover to a top 10 finish. Marcus Sater had been off the road twice with a left front puncture. He got out of the way dutifully of the leaders who really started to intensify their battling in the closing stages. Beginning the last lap, Charlie Hart squeezed his way past Chase Fernandez into second position, but despite setting some strong sector times on the last lap, could not catch eventual winner, Isaac Phelps.